Uh, good morning, Grade 8 learners. Welcome to Valenzuela Life Science 8. I am Sir Albert Saginsin from Polo National High School and I will be your visual science teacher for today. For today's lesson, you will learn to explain the concept of species and classify organisms using the hierarchical taxonomic system. Specifically, you will learn to describe the concept of species, discuss the levels of biodiversity, and identify the different levels in the hierarchical taxonomic system. Here are a few reminders before we start with our discussion. First is to utilize the chat box in asking and answering questions. Second, use appropriate words when chatting in the comment section. Last time, you have learned with Sir Raymond the Mendelian pattern of inheritance. You found out that living organisms are different from one another, resulting to variation. Let us test your knowledge with this game. Guess the gibberish. Read the group of words out loud to decipher it to form the correct word. Use the clue given to guess the right word. You have five seconds to comment your answers. Are you ready? Let's begin. First, gibberish. Her ready story. This refers to the transmission of traits from parents to offspring. Guess the gibberish. Very good. The answer is hereditary. Next, genetics. The science of heredity and variation. Guess the gibberish. Great. The answer is genetics. Next word, phenotype. This is the physical manifestation of traits or the physical appearance of living organisms. Guess the gibberish. Awesome. The answer is phenotype. And last gibberish, gametes. This refers to sex cells such as sperm cells and egg cells. Guess the gibberish. Good job, students. The correct word is gametes. As we all know, life on Earth is very diverse. But are we really that familiar to the different classifications of organisms that can be found in our community? For our next game, entitled You Belong With Me, let us try to identify the following organisms according to its classification. You have five seconds to answer in the comment section. Are you ready? Let's start. First organism is gumamela. Is it a plant or an animal? Good job, it is a plant. Second organism, is it a plant or an animal? Comment your answers. Wow, you are all correct. Cat is an animal. Third organism is mushroom. Hmm, what do you think? Is it a plant or a fungi? Amazing, students. Mushroom is a type of fungi. And last organism is a paramecium. What do you think? Is it a protist or an animal? Comment your answer. Good job! It is a type of protist that is commonly found in dirty, stagnant water. From our activity, we can say that there are different forms of life that inhabits Earth. These organisms are all part of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the shortened word of biological and diversity. This refers to all life forms that can be found on Earth, including plants, animals, fungi, proteins, and microorganisms, as well as the communities they form and habitats they live. Biodiversity is classified into three levels. First one is the ecosystem diversity. This is the various types of places and habitats which organisms live and interact, such as forests, deserts, and aquatic ecosystems. Second is the genetic diversity. This refers to the variety of genetic information 
organisms may contain or simply the gene pool found in a group of organisms. That is why dogs have different breeds and banana have different varieties. Third one is the species diversity. This refers to the variety and extent of differences among living organisms. The species diversity includes all microorganisms, plants, animals, and other living organisms. The concept of species is defined as a group of organisms that share similar genetic information that is capable of interbreeding through the process of reproduction. The species has two classifications. First one is the keystone species, a species whose ecological niche or role greatly affects other species. Examples are plants. As we all know, plants are producers. They provide food, shelter, and resources to other living organisms. If keystone species are lost, other organisms may begin to thrive and outcompete many other organisms. Second is exotic species. These are new species that is introduced to an area with no natural predators or competitors. This might result to the increase in their number and later on will affect other species. Example is janitor fish. To study the diversity of species, biologists use a classification system to name and organize species in a logical manner. The science of classifying and identifying and organizing living organisms is known as taxonomy. A biologist that systematically identifies and classifies organisms based on similar traits of organisms is called as taxonomies. One of the famous taxonomies is Carolus Linnaeus, as he is known as the father of modern taxonomy. He is the originator for classifying plants and animals. He is also the proponent of binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is a two-word naming system. Each species has an assigned two-part scientific name, the genus and the species epithet. Let us have Gumamela as an example. Its common name is Gumamela, but its scientific name is Hibiscus rosa mensis. Another example is this African elephant, which is the common name, and its scientific name is Loxodonta africana. There are rules in writing scientific name. The first letter of the first part, which is the genus epithet, should always be capitalized. The second part, which is the species epithet, is always written in small letters. Remember that scientific names are always italicized. When, when handwritten, it, is, it should be underlined. Carolus Linnaeus proposed the hierarchical taxonomic system for classifying living organisms. It consists of seven taxonomy levels, namely kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. The general term for each level or category is called taxon or taxa in plural form. Organisms are classified according to these categories, which becomes more specific as you go down. The most specific in the group is the species taxonomy level. The general category among the taxonomy levels is the kingdom. Robert Harding with Taker proposed the five kingdom classification system based on first, the nature of cell nucleus. It's either prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cells are type of cells which do not contain true nucleus or membrane-bound organelles, while eukaryotic cells are the type of cells that have true nucleus and which May organelles are membrane bound. Second is the number of cells, either unicellular or multicellular. From the word uni means one, these are type of organisms made up of one cell. While multicellular, multi means many, these are organisms that have many cells. Third one is the mode of nourishment. Autotrophs are organisms that can produce their own food, while heterotrophs are organisms that rely on other organisms for food and energy. Let us have the five kingdom classification system. First one is the kingdom plantae. 
These are multicellular organisms that can produce their own food through photosynthesis, and their cells contain true nucleus. Obviously, all plants belong to kingdom plantae. Second is the kingdom animalia. Organisms belonging to kingdom animalia are made up of many cells, rely on others for food and energy, and contain eukaryotic cells. Examples are animals. Next one is fungi. Organisms under this kingdom are multicellular and heterotropic in which they feed on decaying matter. They contain eukaryotic cells that have cell wall. Examples are mushroom and bread mold. Fourth one is the kingdom protista. These are simple eukaryotic cells. Some are unicellular, while some are multicellular. They are neither plant, animal, nor fungi. They are sometimes called as plant-like, animal-like, or fungus-like. Examples are amoeba and algae. And last one is kingdom monera. These are unicellular organisms which cells do not have true nucleus and it's either autotropic or heterotropic. Some bacteria can produce their own food using chemical substances while some rely on others for their food and nourishment. Now that you know the five kingdom classification system and the hierarchical taxonomic system, let us have this activity to envision a taxonomic hierarchy. This activity is called as where do I belong? Classify the given organism in which kingdom they belong. You have five seconds to answer in the comment section. Are you ready? Let's begin. In which kingdom does this organism belong? Is it kingdom animalia, plantae, protista, monera, or fungi? Comment your answers. You got it right. The answer is Kingdom Animalia. These organisms belong to Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cordata, Class Mammalia, Order Carnivora, Family Canidae, Genus Canis, and Species Familiaris. What do you think is the common name for this organism? Comment your answers. Very good. The common name for this organism is dog. The scientific name is Canis familiaris. By looking at the taxonomy levels, where do you think dog's scientific name came from? Comment your answer. Amazing! Canis familiaris came from the genus and species taxonomy levels. Another one. In which kingdom does this organism belong? Is it kingdom Animalia, Plantae, Protista, Monera, or Fungi? Comment your answer. Awesome! This organism belongs to kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cordata, Class Mammalia, Order Primata, Family Community, Genus Homo, and Species Sapien. What do you think is the common name for this organism? Correct. The common name for this organism is human. Using the taxonomy level, can you guess the scientific name of human? Comment your answer. Amazing. The scientific name of human is Homo sapien. Again, scientific name came from the genus and species taxonomy levels. It's trivia time. Did you know that there is, there is an estimate of 8.7 million of species across the world? And only 25% of this 8.7 million were named and identified by scientists because naming them all would take a thousand years? Here in the Philippines, one of the newly discovered species under Kingdom Plantae is Begonia veneni. This is native to the municipality of San Vicente, Palawan, characterized by its small size, pink flowers, and striped leaves. It is named after environmentalist Jonathan Veneni. Under Kingdom Animalia is the Calliopis salitan. 
It is endemic in the Dinagat Island here in the Philippines. It is unique for its large size as well as its body coloration. The name Salitan came from the Tagalog word which means alternate. This is because of its alternating body color. Amazing, isn't it? There are hundreds of species waiting to be discovered. This means that we need to value every living organism because in reality, the biggest threat to biodiversity is human activity. We start right by conserving and protecting our environment because biodiversity is one of the greatest natural resources. For those who join the Biodiversity Day last May 22nd of this year, thank you for being part of the solution. We can all be warriors of the earth. For your exit task, create a poster or an infographic representing the levels of biodiversity in a short band paper. Provide a brief explanation regarding your output. Submit your work to your respective science teacher. Now it is time to answer your questions from the comment section. From Paula National High School, in what kingdom does virus belong? Virus such as coronavirus that causes the COVID-19 pandemic does not possess the characteristics of living organism except replication. In order to replicate, they need to invade a host cell. Without a host cell, viruses are completely inert. Therefore, they are not classified into any kingdom of living organisms. That's it. Thank you so much for your participation and see you all next week for another episode of Venezuela Live Science 8. Stay safe and God bless.